Now in this video, we'll, we'll be getting into some of the layer two kind of connections by using sub interfaces. Now probably in this section, I'm going to use all the, all the are trunk links. All, all the links are trunk links here. Like in the previous sections, whatever the logical interfaces we have seen, we have seen different combinations like uh, in some connections, we have used some SVI interfaces on the switches. And in some connections, we have used some sub interfaces. And in, in some connections, we have been using layer three interfaces. It all depends like, but uh, in this lab, I'm going to show you how we can build a logical multiple connections between the routers by using only one interface. Like let's take an example, I go to router one. Now I want router one to have a direct connection from router two and also to have a connection to router three, also to router four, also to router five. Now in this way, you need to have normally, if you, if you want to have some direct connection from router one to all the routers, in that case, if I go with a normal connection, I need to have some separate connection to router two and then to router three and then to router four and then to router five. So which means I need to have five different phys uh, physical interfaces, which is required for me to build the connection. But that can be possible by using one, one physical interface. Now what I can do is I can configure the opposite interface as a trunk. And on this router, as I'm using only one physical interface, I can build four separate in fact, one to two, I can build four separate sub interfaces. One to three, one to four and one to five. And all this, each and every sub interface goes virtually to every router. Now that is possible. And this is something very really useful for you to build normal layer two connections. If you are setting up your lab or uh, this is also useful in the service for networks. That's how they provide a connection to multiple customers on the same interface. We can still have multiple WAN connections on the same interface by using uh, by using sub interfaces kind of implementations. Even if probably it can also be useful in the CCI lab exams where you may have some kind of topologies where you'll be building some logical topologies based on this kind of scenarios. So we'll see how, we how it is possible and what are the specific configurations we need to do. Now the basic prerequisite knowledge you need to have the concept of VLANs and trunking, just like the same thing what we have uh, discussed in the previous uh, previous uh, layer two topologies again and also you need to have you need to know how to create sub interfaces on the router apart from that everything is going to be the same so just to understand i'm going to build some logical topologies here where i'm i'm going to assume that there is a connection from router one to router four if i want i can build one more connection from here to here as well because it's it's going to be logical again Anyway, I'm not going to do that. If you want, you can just uh, for practice purpose, you can build one more logical connection from here to here as well as here to here as well. So we can build a full mesh, a logical topology between each and every router without adding any extra links by just adding some few configurations. And it's going to simplify a lot of things here. Like you don't need to have separate interfaces. Now it's going to simply, you can follow one standard physical topology and you can build multiple logical topologies inside that without even changing the wire. So that's one of the major benefit you get. Now this is a little bit useful again, if you are building your own CCI rack also, we can build some logical topologies based on this. So let's, let's go one by one. I have a pre-configured topology here, exactly the same way I have connected as of now. Now I'm going to build some logical topology based on this diagram. Okay. Uh, I, I want a connection from router one to router two and router one to router four as well. As of now, I don't need from one to three. If you want, we can build that is something you can do on your own. So I'll go to router one first. I'll start one by one, starting from router one. Now the first thing what I'm going to do is anyway, on all the interfaces, I'm going to use them as opposite side. I'm using sub interfaces. So what we do is we configure all these interfaces as a trunk links and these trunk links will carry all the VLAN traffic by default. And if you are very well aware on uh, what specific VLANs it is going to carry, you can specifically mention those VLANs uh, like we, you can do some kind of pruning. That is something you can do, uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to getting into that here as of now. So let's, let's go and configure all the links as a trunk links here, file links. On the switch, I'm connecting F0 by 125, switch port, trunk, encapsulation, switch port, more trunk, and then no shutdown command. Anyway, the interfaces are up here. 
Now, if I verify show interface trunk, I don't see any trunks because right now the interfaces on the routers, they all are in shutdown state. Okay, so let's go one by one. Let, let's build some connections on the router one. So the first thing I'll go to router one and on the router one, I'm going to create two sub interfaces. So I have only one connection. I'll say no shutdown. And then I'm going to build two connections that is F0 by 1.12. And I'm going to assume that it's a VLAN 12. We need to create those VLANs as well on the switches. And then I'm going to assign the IP address as 10.0.12.1 255 This is on the router one. And the same thing I'm going to create one more sub interface that is going from router one to router four dot fourteen and calculation dot one q fourteen. And then I'm going to give the IP address as 10.0.14.1 done. Now show IP interface brief. So we are going to create these two sub interfaces here and they are carrying the VLAN 12 and VLAN 14 traffic. So let's uh, now one more thing we need to ensure that on the switch side there should be a trunk link which we already did and the next thing is the VLAN must be created on the switch. Now you need to be very careful, especially in your CCI exams when you have a logical topology built. If you are running some VTP kind of implementations, if the VTP is not synchronizing between the switches, there is no VLAN created. In that case, you may see some connectivity issues. So just ensure that the VLAN is created, whatever the VLAN you are using. So let me create all the VLANs once here. So I'm using VLAN 12, VLAN 14, VLAN 34, and then VLAN 35 that is 3 to 5 and then VLAN 25 which is going from 2 to 5 total there are 5 VLANs you can see 1 2 3 4 5 I got 5 file connections so 5 VLANs created so let's go let's do the same thing on the router 2 as well so I'll, I'll start like this I'll go from router 1 to 2 2 to 5 like that so clockwise let's go to router 2 and on the router 2 again, I'm going to create some uh, sub interfaces, making the physical interface up. And then I'm going to create some top sub interface with 12 encapsulation and an IP address 10.0.12.2, 255, 255, 255, Now I should be able to ping between 12, 2 to 1 because I already finished the configuration on the router 1. Uh, it takes some time because on the switches, the spanning tree has to converge. So I should be able to ping. So which is going to confirm that the connectivity between router two to router one is okay. So that, that's how we are going to verify. We'll, we'll start up with the configuration on the router one and then we'll do it on the router two. At the same time, we'll go and verify the connectivity between one and two because one and two is already configured. Now the same way we are going to do on the two to five as well. So on the router two, I'm going to create one more sub interface which goes from two to five. So I'm using the numbers uh, as per the router numbers and the VLAN numbers also as per the router numbers. Now you have to go with the numbers, whatever is given for you in the examinations. So encapsulation.1q25 and then IP address, it's going to be 25.2. 25 25 it's going to be 25.2. And then the next thing done. So we just have only two, two sub interfaces created on the router two. If you want, we can add some more as per our logical requirements. Now let's go to router three, not router three. The next router is router five. So I'll go to router five. <coughs> so on the router five, this is my router five, interface F0 by zero, physical interface is up. And then first I'm going to create a sub interface connecting between two to five. Encapsulation dot one to 25. And then the IP address standard zero dot 25 dot and then the slash 24 subnet mask now hopefully if if everything is okay I should be able to ping between 5 to 2 10.0.25.2 I should see the communication let me meantime I'll quickly configure the other interface as well what's the other sub interface 3 to 5 35 and calculation dot 1q 35 and then the IP address is 10.0.35.5 
So I should be able to ping between 5 and 2. I should see the reply. You can see it's coming up. Let's go to next router, router 3 and verify the same. So on the router 3, so this is router 3, interface F0 by 0, physical interface has to be up and then interface F0 by 0 dot 35. So I'll start with 35, encapsulation dot 1Q35 and then IP address standard 0.35.3. So I'm using 3 on the router 3. And then interface F0 by 0 dot, what is the other interface? 34 dot interface. Encapsulation dot 1Q34. And then the IP address has to be 10.0.34.3. Done. So if I verify the interfaces, I can see the interfaces are up. And the next thing is I should be able to ping between the router 3 to 5 because I have already finished the configuration between 3 to 5 on both the sides. You can see the reply is coming. Now the last thing I just need to fix only between 4 and 3. So let's go to router 4. Router 4 command line. So on the router 4, hostname is router 4, interface F0 by 0, no shutdown command. And then I'm going to create some sub interface on the router 4. I need to create a sub interface between 3 to 4. Encapsulation dot 1 q 34. And then IP address is 10.0.34.4, 255.255.255.0. And then the other sub interface I'm using is 1.4. And then encapsulation dot one q one four, and then IP address has to be ten dot zero dot one four dot four. Done. So now finally I should be able to ping between all the interfaces because I'm a, I'm done with the configuration on all the sites. So I'll start up with three first. I should get the reply, and also I should be able to ping between four and one as well. Now I can see this is how a normal layer 2 connections are built by setting up a one physical LAN connection. Now I did not modify anything here. It's just a normal physical topology but based on this normal physical topology I can build virtually many logical connections. You can see I, I can have one more one more uh, WAN connection from here to here if you want one to five and I can also build one more WAN connection from here to here. Like that, I just have only five devices here. Even if you have 15, 20 devices, you can build uh, any number of logical inter logical connections by just configuring the opposite side of the switch ports as a trunk ports. And, and on the routers, we can create some interfaces. Now, when you do this configuration, there are a few things we need to keep in mind, especially in the troubleshooting sections where uh, you need to ensure that whatever the VLAN you are creating on the sub interface, that VLAN uh, should be correct. On the router side and the physical interface has to be no shutdown state and that you can verify with no show IP interface brief commands now these are the end IP address also should be correct again with the correct IP address and the correct subnet mask let's say there is a problem between router 1 and router 3 now the next thing we need to see whether the opposite interfaces has to be configured as a trunk and those trunk link must allow the VLAN 13 which are because it is 1 to 3 on both the sides if that particular trunk link is not allowing the VLAN 13, in that case, you won't see the communication happens. And especially if you are using some VTP, uh, the, because VTP kind of things, VTP pruning kind of things, there might be some cases where you may have modified the VTP pruning list where you have removed 13. So the cases can be anything. You need to ensure that that particular trunk link must carry the VLAN traffic and there should be uh, configured as a trunk links. And based on this, we can build uh, as many logical connections between the routers we want.